So, Mildred, are you ready for our new show? I'm so excited and worried and happy and sad and angry and scared and... All right, mate, only asked. Ah, for sure. Will people like us? I don't think they all will. But what an opportunity. It will make us or break us. Right, enough of the chat. I should finish this set and get the show started. Okay, before we start, for any viewers watching now who are offended by swearing, probably best you stop watching. Hey, welcome to today's Not The Late Fitness Show. This is the first real show after our pilot last year, where we shared the core momentum trainer with the world. This show is based on all of my favourite late night shows, sketch shows, the internet and YouTube. It's a show about fitness, the latest fads, internet comments, guru gaffes, as well as information on fitness, movement, training techniques, the latest science, anatomy lectures and so much more. We have a light hearted show that will poke fun at everyone including ourselves at Faster. Better than that though, you should be able to learn stuff and things which makes us like Sesame Street and shit. First though, we should get started. So over to my sidekick Mildred, my personal chimp. If you've read The Chimp Paradox by Dr. Steve Peters, you'll understand why he's so emotional. Over to you, Mildred. T credits, lad. Today's show is about building a career in the fitness industry. Chicken shoes, shit bagels, working the glutes, and we also have an amazing video from our very own Jarrett. I want to talk about career planning this week, so if you're a trainer, or you want to be a trainer, this should be helpful. It also coincides with the launch of my warm-up gig phases program, if you're watching this in August 2016, and the new system we have in place for becoming a personal trainer. When I look around the industry, at the different training companies, business mentors and so forth, I realise that most of them are full of crap, bad promises and bullshit swearing, just to get their shitting products noticed. Sorry about that, Mildred does get excitable. I was going to say, it's full of well-meaning gurus who are more desperate to shock and promise for marketing purposes than actually deliver something successful and different. The key to a successful career in our industry is simple, as it's also the key to a successful career in most industries where you are essentially your own boss. You need to earn more than you spend, you need to collect everything you earn, and you need to treat people well. The key here is the first one, which is tough. It is tough because it's reliant on great marketing, something that not many trainers have the money or the expertise to pull off. Marketing is built on a sound product, and a sound product in our industry is built on great education. This is a simple equation that helps people to a long career. Unfortunately, education can be sold as sound when it's actually just complicated or worse, made up. Education should help you make yourself something, a brand, a known way of training, and give you the confidence to train anyone. It should help humble you into knowing there's always more to read and learn, but give you the steel to stand up to the guru and argue whilst having great science behind you. Talking of guru shit, here's Mildred with our top five guru bullshits of the week. At five, foam rolling breaks down fascia. At four, posture training reduces first time injury risks. At three, 
manually assessing joints and muscles is relevant to skill training. At two, uncomplicated basic strength training is all you need, where this training is, is stuff that comes from old school bodybuilding. And at one, common sense, then real life, then years of experience, then client feedback, and then results are all more important than research papers. Oh, I could just... What a... I mean, who would? That is such a chicken shoe thought that I imagine if you debated with Guy, it'd be full of shit bagels. So you probably need to know what our Mildred is talking about with these chicken shoes and shit bagels. Well, who better to tell you about chicken shoes than our resident chicken shoe expert, Cluck Off. The translation is done by me. Hey, the chicken shoe situation is one where someone appears to already have an answer to their own question. In this scenario, you have to then help them perform their own solution better and not offer the actual answer. Imagine someone has two dead chickens, you bastards, and they decide what they should do with them. The sensible idea may be to cook them and then eat them, you bastards, but in our case, the person decides to wear them as shoes. When you speak to them, they want to know how to make their chicken shoes even better, while you want to know why they decided to put them on their feet in the first place. If you say take them off and cook them, the person will think you're mad because they've been wearing them for so long now. You lose, despite knowing it is a crap idea to wear chickens as shoes when you could cook them, you bastards. If the person walks into their house with cold feet and the guy is stood in the kitchen wearing chickens on his feet, the bastard, then suggests to his new mate you should wear these too, it will result in the new person putting them on and instantly warming up their feet. Should this new person then approach you and ask you how they can make their chickens warm their feet even more, you would not be able to tell them to take them off and buy slippers as they would argue with you. Again, you lose. Thank you, Cluck Off. I look forward to hearing more from you soon. This obviously leaves the term shit bagel to describe to you. Shit bagel is an analogy of an argument you get into with people where the techniques being argued may even be possible to prove through scientific papers, but where the validity of the question means that the argument is not required. This is similar to arguing with someone about the best way to spread shit on a bagel. Statistically, the knife may well be better than the spoon, but actually, no one would like shit on their bagel. So when building your career, you need an idea of what you need to know, and then some experienced people around you to help you through the tough spots. The phases program, our first three levels of mentorship, I have written will allow you to go through a progressive improvement in your ability to research, market, sell, as well as develop movement eyes and the skills to help clients change shape, skill level and improve their wellness. Additionally, you will be able to get the chance to be part of a group of trainers who love to have a lot of fun and make people happy. I do have an opportunity for you all to come through the three phases or just one of the phases of this learning journey. You'll be the first to come through the journey and you'll be joined by a group of other trainers who want to be first. You'll get to feedback to me directly as I build the course, giving you the chance to bespoke the learning to you. My phased mentorship system is technical enough to improve your skills as a trainer, whichever level you're currently at. It features how to find and read science so that you always deliver the best answer to your clients and it shows you how to market and sell in our social media driven community. But that's enough of the selling and promotional stuff. Phew, I thought you would go on and on. I know we need wage, but really, did you mention this only costs £50 a month, which is over 30% discount on eventual full price, plus you have access to material after you've paid, no dodgy membership schemes from us. Buy our courses, come back and watch as the material improves, so that you stay cutting edge without it costing you earth. Hey, what's that sign? Stop it. Get off me. So, for a new feature, and to be fair, this episode of Everything is New, over to our swearing superhero's guide to anatomy. 
This week, as it's the first week, he's going to be covering the ass, so to speak. Hi, I am Superhero Steve. Today I'm going to talk about the Groots. We have three of the bastards, but today we're focusing on the big booger, Glute Max. Glute Max has its origin at the ilium and travels around and down into the femur and the IT band, which itself continues around to the tibia. Quick note, stop trying to stretch the IT band. It fucking hates it for a start. Plus, you need to be Chuck fucking Norris to get that thing to stretch. It is solid. The glute max shortens with hip extension and external rotation. Although from a lengthened position can assist hip abduction as part of a stretch reflex. Essentially, we tend to get at the bastard by lengthening it first. That kicks the lazy git into action via the central nervous system. And then we hope that fires the thing up to contract a bit more than normal. This is not necessarily true though. It could bail out or do something else we did not expect. As like all muscles, it's a lazy piece of shit a lot of the time. In our courses, we call this PAM, Predicted Activating Motion. That is because our author, the 3D version of the blog presenting this, is full of himself and likes to invent shit to confuse us all. Getting back to the subject. Planes of motion are essentially a bag of bollocks. Rarely it is vector that we are talking about. And so pure hip adduction to abduction is unlikely. As would pure flexion, extension, internal and external rotation. Wow, see what I did? I could have just said all movements are a combination, but I didn't. It must mean that Dick in the studio probably wrote this script. I know, right? This has a script. In real life, the glutes are always active to a certain degree, and they have roles that are not so obvious. Awkward twats. This is shown with EMGs in functional movement like running. And to be sure, I don't mean functional, as in the balancing 3D shitty stuff people say it is when they want to put someone down. In running, the glute max has a role just prior to heel strike and also in spine stability and dare I say it, posture. I have built a compilation of movements that occur when you set a task that is built to emphasize the glutes for running. However, don't go off your fucking handle if you don't see squats or you think these are hard to load. Later in this series, I shall inform you of why that is such a shitty question to ask. Right then, faster fuck faces, over to the smug fuck McFuckerson in the studio. Cheers, Steve, you bag of shit. And are you American or Bristolian? It's a shit accent, mate. Thank you for watching the show. I want to share with you this video, as not only is it amazing, I think it shows how much fun we can have when we want to. Learn how to build stuff like this in my course. Oh, and also learn why. Over to Jarrett.